Dr. Brinker, Master Guide with the Barnstone Studios. I'm here with my student, Holly, and she's uh, begun the uh, Drawing One, Lesson One, uh, and she's completed homework for that. So I thought I'd launch into this and, um, and kind of take it this way. So if we were looking at a two-dimensional elevation of a bottle, like you see here on the right, or on the left, rather, and we're following along the, uh, uh, along the silhouette, tracing the outer shape of, of our bottle. What we're recognizing is in some instances, we're seeing straight lines. Uh, they might be vertical or horizontal or on a diagonal. In other cases, we might see curving uh, form. And so we're going to divide it down into all of the appropriate shapes. So when, I, when, when we look across the shoulder, and we recognize that orange line and we see it's on a diagonal, what we're looking at really is a vector. So a vector is a linear direction. So if we have a piece of a line, basically a fragment in front of us, when we recognize it as a vector, we're, we're imagining that the line, as, as if it had arrowheads on the two sides, continues to uh, move forward and, and take us on a linear path. So because we're looking at that as a vector, we can then look at the, the other side and what we notice is the two come together, uh, the two sloping diagonals of the shoulder come together. And in this case, what's really interesting is where the two vectors continue, they actually meet at a common point. And in this case, it's right at the top horizontal line of the bottle top. That's not by accident. So when a designer sees an opportunity to make events happen or multiple events happen along a, a single path, that's a design opportunity. And a good designer is going to make maximum use of any kinds of occurrence like that. Um, so that's intentional, I promise you. So if we go to the next, then if we look above that, that earlier vector, we see here a green line and it's slightly different in direction than the earlier one. So it's implying its own set of vectors and then they're going to take us to a common point that aligns itself on the vertical center line. So at this point, our bottle is conceived of having two independent triangles forming the, the shoulder and into the neck. So from here, it's a matter of looking along the silhouette of the bottle and trying to recognize other shapes. So if we look into the body of the bottle and we see the two uh, vertical lines, they have to be formed out of a rectangle. So if I simply join them, we get a rectangle as such. So that's the body of the bottle, it's that simple. And then there are more rectangles in the upper part of the, uh, the neck and into the, the head of the bottle. So at this point, these are all the forms that we're recognizing in this bottle. And now it's a matter of interpreting what's going on in the other areas which are seen now in black because they haven't been established as an individual shape. So if we look um, at the top of the, the neck, we can see a, a kind of inverted triangle that's uh, giving us just that little fraction there. And then at the base, we're seeing another inverted triangle that's giving us the direction of the base. Uh, along this center area, it's curving, so it's part of a circular complex or possibly an elliptical uh, movement. And later we'll talk about how to recognize and draw those. And all of these other points at the top of the bottle, you can see a curvilinear movement there. So these are small circles at the top and even some potentially implied in this area, but I'm seeing it more triangular, so I, I showed it that way. Hi, I'm Kat Barnstone Saffron and the director of Barnstone Studios. Myron Barnstone was my father, an international artist and an accomplished teacher. In 1979, he opened up the Barnstone Studios in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and eventually it grew to a size that we had to move to Copley, PA, for 10,000 square feet. 10,000 square feet of students working hard, of Myron work, walking from student to student, making sure they understood the nuances. 
Myron would have three or four or five different levels of student in one class. And each time he got to talk to them, it was on their level. And that's what we're working with with our Master Guide series. So today you saw a clip of our Master Guide, Roger Brinker, working with the more advanced students. This is part of what Myron would have done. He would have made sure to spend time with each person where they were. We are providing for you that opportunity to watch these videos that will teach you what you might find missing simply taking the using the workbook and taking the class. So we ask if you would like the full lecture to join us on Patreon. It would be $25 a month and you will have access to a full catalog. Major artists like Da Vinci had patrons. Patreon is giving you an opportunity to help be our patron. We really appreciate all your participation and enjoy the rest of the videos. As Myron would always say, be well.